Life of Pi, Summaries of Chapters 18 through 28. Chapter 18. When Pi was 15, he was exploring his hometown. He saw the Jamia Masjid, the mosque, but did not go in. Islam, like Christianity, was known for few gods and great violence. Pi met a Muslim baker at a nearby shop. The baker offered Pi some round, white, unleavened bread and invited Pi into his house. There were two rooms, one for the bakery and one for the man's bedroom. While the baker explained how to make the bread, the call from prayer sound came out of the mosque. The man immediately got his prayer rug and began to pray. His praying was very physical, standing, bending, kneeling. Chapter 19 Pi went to see the baker again. The baker told him that Islam was about the beloved. Muhammad was loved by his followers, and Islam is full of brotherhood and devotion. Pai went to the mosque with the baker, listened to the imam, and prayed. Pai knelt and touched his head to the floor, just like the baker did, and Pai felt a deeply religious contact. Chapter 20 The baker's name was Satish Kumar. It was a common name, so it was not unusual that he would have the same name as Pai's former biology teacher. Satish Kumar, the religious Muslim baker seeking union with God, is pictured on the left. Satish Kumar, the atheist biology teacher seeking understanding through science, is pictured on the right. Pai said both Mr. Kumars were his prophets. Pai felt close to heaven two times, once in India after praying while looking at the sea, and once in Canada when seeing a vision of the Virgin Mary. Pai says the presence of God is the finest of rewards. Chapter 21 one day, after visiting Pi, the author sits in a cafe and thinks about two of Pi's phrases, dry, yeastless factuality, and the better story. The author writes his own thoughts. The founding principle of existence is what we call love. The author says God's silence is confounding, but adds that there is a trusting sense of presence and purpose. Chapter 22. The author writes that a dying atheist might see white light and make the deathbed leap of faith. The agnostic would see the light, accept the dry, useless factuality of not enough oxygen in the brain, and miss the better story. Chapter 23. One lovely hot day, 16-year-old Pi was walking along the seaside with his parents and brother. They met Pi's priest, Imam, and Hindu pundit, religion teacher. Each of the religious leaders had heard rumors about Pi. Pi's parents were shocked when the priest wanted to know why their son was going to a temple. The imam wanted to know why Pi was crossing himself, and the pundit wanted them to know their son had gone Muslim. Pi describes the meeting with those he called the three wise men in a very funny way. None of the three knew that Pi had accepted all three religions. Each thought that Pi was a true believer, but each thought he believed in just one religion, the one each had taught him. Everyone met up unexpectedly. Pi's father had been more interested in finance than religion. Pi's mother had been brought up as a Hindu, but had gone to Baptist school, so they had canceled each other out. His brother Ravi was only interested in cricket. Pi had not discussed religion with his parents. The imam asked Pai if it was true that Pai went to church, mosque, and temple. The imam said Hindus and Christians were idolaters. The Hindu pundit said Muslims had many wives. The priest said, Pisin, there is salvation only in Jesus. Then the men began to rudely criticize one another's religions. Pai's father reminded Pai's teachers that everyone had freedom to practice any religion. All three wise men yelled at Mr. Patel. Yes, practice, singular. Each held up an index finger to show the number one. The Hindu pundit told Mr. Patel that Pai must choose a religion, that he could not accept all three. Pai said Gandhi had said that all religions are true. No one knew what to say because Gandhi's statue was just down the street. Pai said he just wanted to love God. Mr. Patel said that was what they were all trying to do. No one could disagree, so Mr. Patel suggested that they should all go get ice cream. Chapter 24. Ravi teases Pai and says Pai should join three more religions and be on holiday every day of his life. Chapter 25. 
Pai saw that people who claimed to be religious but who never did good works certainly loved to get angry about anything they thought was an insult to God. Some people tried to keep Pai out of the church, mosque, or temple because he practiced more than one religion. He changed Christian churches and went only at crowded times to temple. Pai thought people should spend their energy on helping others and looking into their own hearts. Chapter 26 A few days after the unexpected meeting with the three wise men, Pai asked his father to allow him to be baptized and to get a prayer rug. His father tried to get him to choose one religion, but Pai wanted three. His father told him to ask his mother. She was worried about him being interested in old-fashioned things and suggested he occupy himself by reading Robinson Crusoe. Pai said if Mama G could have more than one passport, Pai could have more than one religion. Pai wondered how many nations were in the sky. His mother thought one or none. Note, Robinson Crusoe is a book about a castaway who survived on a tropical island. Chapter 27 Pai's mother lets him be baptized and have a prayer rug. Neither of his parents understand his interest in religion. His father thinks progress is unstoppable and religion will be left behind. Mr. Patel does not like the current Indian government of Mrs. Gandhi. He hopes her rule will end, and Mrs. Patel says that Pai's interest in Islam could end too. Mr. Patel can accept Hinduism and Christianity, but Islam is foreign to him. Chapter 28 Pai tells the author that he wishes he still had his prayer rug because Pai loved praying outside, surrounded by nature. Pai found his baptism refreshing, but his parents were uncomfortable. <laughs>